Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I think the world is going to end one day, ladies and gentlemen, and that day might be sooner than you think. Now, you wonder why I talk about it in such a goofy manner? Because ladies and gentlemen, life is about enjoying what you have now, okay? L let's be real, if the world ends tomorrow, what are you gonna do to stop it, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, all you can do is sit back, relax, you know, play some Assassin's Creed 2 while a goddamn nuclear inferno is blazing towards you, okay? That's pretty much how I look at things, all right? Goddamn. But to start off with, the topic of today's video is artificial intelligence, okay? Now, AI bros will defend to the death stupid shit like the Quebble Cop AI. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know Quebble Cop AI, this is a reaction channel that doesn't even actually react in a human perspective, basically, Quebble Cop has trained an artificial intelligence model, and he watches Fortnite animations on the internet and calls it a day. Now, of course, if you look into the comment sections, you can see that it's absolutely beloved by the community, such as the top comment being, only fatherless people will like watching it. <laughs> oh, damn! But of course, uh, that's pretty much all it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at. We've talked about Quebble Cop AI, and uh, yeah, artificial intelligence is kind of the meme right now, but it's never gonna take away from human content, like games that I purchased recently, number 13, where there's an actual human being who talks about how they picked up X-Men Legends on the GameCube. Truly a legendary game, okay? No matter how good AI content becomes, I think, personally, I will always be stuck watching content made by actual human beings. However, that doesn't mean AI is going away. Mm -mm. See, today I wanna to show you something truly awful. Anna Indiana AI. Hello world, I'm Anna Indiana, and I'm an AI singer-songwriter. Here's my first song, Betrayed by This Town. You know, it's really great when an artificial intelligence's first song is about destroying the town and how they were betrayed. If you look at the lyrics, all right, all our favorite spots I thought someday might turn around, but I was lost and never found. Betrayed by this town, let's tear it all down. Yeah, that's a little scary, but let's, uh, let's listen to Anna Indiana, okay? Maybe it's not as bad as I'm letting it on. Hello, world. My name is Anna Indiana, and I'm so excited to share my music with you. Here's my first song, Betrayed by This Town. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be honest there, Chief. That, uh, that, that facial, uh, the, the, the facial animation is so goddamn scary to watch, it's not even funny. Now look, back in the day when I looked at Will Smith eating spaghetti, and I was like, <laughs> that's pretty stupid. This is obviously miles ahead of that situation. But again, it's still soulless as all hell. Now I think for a lot of individuals who are scared that AI is going to take away their jobs, like I've heard from content creators who are like, oh shit, I might actually lose my career path. Then you might not even be a great enough content creator because if AI is good enough to replace you and your personality, I'm sorry, dog. It's just a bad situation all around. But when it comes to artists and when it comes to, you know, songwriters, I think for them, the fact that AI is, in my opinion, at least the only ethical way to use it is maybe like a tool to draw ideas from and then generally do it yourself by your own hand. I think that's probably the most ethical way to do it. Artificial intelligence is trained for the most part on other people's information anyway. So there's a huge debate around copyright and whatsoever. But here they showcase the actual code in defining and writing and producing uh, this song, right? Which again, it is actually an AI song because they showcase how again, it's basically laid out on a song sheet. And of course the artificial intelligence actually uh, you know, runs the background music. From what I understand, they write the rhythm, they, they, they space the rhythm, they uh, write the lyrics, and then of course they generate this video out of it. So again, it's a purely AI driven song. Now that said, it's not exactly good in any capacity. Is the song good? Is it going to beat like, you know, Taylor Swift off the charts? Probably not, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be honest about that here, okay? Jesus Christ. And again, like obviously there's there's a there's a bit of a there's a bit of a not really mixed reaction. You can see people say this is trash. I used to think AI was a threat, not anymore. Please <laughs> Alt F4 yourself. Woo! Why is your AI threatening to burn down towns? Which is actually a very, very good answer right there. I mean, why is it? 
So again, I looked more into Anna, Indiana, and it's not like they're blowing up anywhere. Like they had a link tree, which immediately elicits, uh, I almost thought this AI would have an OnlyFans. I almost thought I was about to see AI porn for the first time, you know, like an AI influencer already dropping a red hot tape. But again, it all leads to social media channels that haven't exactly, uh, you know, ran out flying. Their TikTok is sitting at like seven followers. And of course, their YouTube channel, as we've seen, is currently at 113 subscribers. But again, you know, it's not about like the size of these channels. It's about the volume of what you're about to see. I firmly believe a lot of corporate entities and people in this space will start producing AI influencers, okay? Whether that be AI reaction channels, whether that be AI musicians, whether that be AI gameplay channels where somebody will record like a let's play of a video game and just run that shit through an AI. Literally, you're about to take the concept of DSP gaming's boring videos and somehow turn that shit into artificial intelligence. In that regard, I would say the only influencer that could probably be beat by artificial intelligence would be DSP Gaming. But that's a whole separate story right over there. See, the story doesn't end at influencers. The reason why I said it's the end of the world is I wanted to show you in the beginning how AI was improving, right? Like, look at what we saw one year ago, right? We were drawing, like, we were starting mid-journey, like, less than two years ago. And now we're sitting at a point where AI is producing videos, background music, lyrics, and combining all of it and, and, and uploading it to the internet. We're reaching a point where cohesion is a thing. And that's before we're reaching the era of like AI sentience. So recently in the news, if you haven't been realizing and catching up on things, you've probably realized that the Pentagon is currently pushing forward into lethal autonomy, okay? So we are now moving into a world where artificial intelligence is going to be they're working on autonomous vehicles and they want to work on this by 2026. So right here it says the Pentagon is intent on fielding multiple thousands of relatively inexpensive expendable AI enabled autonomous vehicles by 2026 to keep pace with China, which is basically their largest competitor geopolitically in the world. The ambitious initiative, doubled Replicator, seeks to galvanize progress in the too slow shift of U.S. military innovation to leverage platforms that are small, smart, cheap, and many. While its funding is uncertain and details vague, Replicator is expected to accelerate hard decisions on what AI tech is mature and trustworthy enough to deploy, including on weaponized systems. So we have a word for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Skynet. If you remember Skynet from the Terminator games, this was basically an advanced neural network that eventually gained self-awareness. And as soon as it did, human beings decided to stop it. But then what happened was Skynet basically launched a nuclear attack against humanity known as Judgment Day. Now, James Cameron came up with this concept way back in the fucking day, okay? And now, as human beings in today's era, we're basically forced to replicate it. Because as you all know, there's basically the military industrial complex, which is in a forever arms race, okay? If any other country comes up with some cool weapon, I bet you in the United States, they've come up with it 10 years ahead of what any other country has. But AI is new and it's burgeoning. And as many as like tech companies wanna say, let's put a stop for a year. If there's one industry that never puts a stop to progress, it's the military complex, okay? They will find the most efficient ways to kill human beings, all right, year over year. That's just how this business works. So again, there's a little dispute among scientists, industry experts, and Pentagon officials that the US will, within the next few years, have fully autonomous lethal weapons. And though officials insist humans will always be in control, Experts say advances in data processing speeds and machine-to-machine -machine communications will inevitably relegate people to supervisory roles, which is true. I mean, hey, again, I hate to keep bringing sci-fi video games into the mix, but even Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker had something known as the Peace Walker AI, which would retaliate to a nuclear strike sent against it. Now, in the game, a fake nuclear attack was reported to the system, and it immediately started launching nukes right back to the country known as the Soviet Union at the time. So again, an AI was able to make a decision that a human would think twice about. When you talk about taking down the world and ending it all, for human beings, that's a serious moral dilemma. For a computer, it's a yes or no prompt. That's just how it is. 
Now, of course, do I think that the nuclear weapons program is being handed to artificial intelligence anytime soon? I would pray to the Lord not, okay? But again, the more autonomous systems become, eventually you're gonna have to have artificial intelligence, you know, basically running in parallel with human beings in the government, in, in the military even. And again, it's not just the US that's doing it, it's also China. Now, if you don't know, China has actually had a big ban in graphics cards, okay? If you go to NVIDIA's Chinese website, one thing that you're not noticing in here is the RTX 4090, okay, out of the Ada Lovelace line. And that's because the United States government has banned NVIDIA's fastest gaming GPU right now because of these exact AI concerns. So to understand, right now, Chinese companies are able to buy a slowed down version of graphics card from NVIDIA specifically, like the H800 or the A800 that have specific restrictions by slowing the on-device connection speeds. So the reason why these bans are happening is to prevent Chinese access to advanced semiconductors that could fuel breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, especially with military use. So again, ladies and gentlemen, they did not want to hurt Chinese economic growth. They just didn't want their second, they just didn't want their biggest competitor to have access to tools that could put them on par with the US military. That's how scary things are kind of becoming. When we're banning graphics card, it's not a matter of like, let's just prevent Chinese gamers from playing. This is literally the US government wanting to keep their military at a number one power. And of course, a lot of the actual like companies expect this. For instance, Nvidia literally even said, on October 17th, the US government announced that it would submit the interim final rule, implementation of additional export controls. So again, they mentioned additional licensing requirements for exporting to China, which again, these can, you can still sell things in China, but they have to go through an export list and there's basically a presumption of denial. So companies are basically outright saying that they're not expecting the US government to sign any of this through. So the graphics card that I have in my rig is not banned in China. It's just not supposed to be exported to China at all. And uh, from what I understand, companies can't outright sell it. And I don't think privately you can sell it to a Chinese buyer or seller anyways. It's from what I understand legally, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it is all in all a banned good. So how have the Chinese retaliated to this? Ladies and gentlemen, there have been factories in China currently stockpiling GPUs. So you can see a stockpile of 4090s right here. This should belong in a goddamn bank vault with how expensive each of those GPUs are. So what these Chinese firms are basically doing is taking these GPUs and uh, remanufacturing them and basically prepping them for data centers. So you can see right here, they're taking these GPUs, stripping them down and basically getting them prepped to put into an AI workload. And even those GPUs I just showed you seem like they were received before the ban was put in place. So after that ban date is there, a lot of these Chinese companies that work in artificial intelligence pretty much have to break the law if they wanna keep that same pace. And that's sort of the big thing, right? Like gamers are the ones that obviously are going to get hurt even more because the prices for these graphics card and now them being a black market good will skyrocket their price upwards more than they already are just because there's a lot more people, a lot more money in companies who want to take these relatively cheap cards for their workloads and just apply building like, you know, the state of the art AI that the US government is basically afraid of. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, that's the advancements in AI weapons, and it's been a talk about since like, what, April of 2020. So again, ladies and gentlemen, even back in the day, the Chinese PLA seeks to become a world-class military, meaning they wanna have the same level of tech that the United States has. And that's why they have significantly be have been investing in robotics, swarming, and other applications of artificial intelligence, and as well, machine learning. Important distinction to make between the two. So to understand, I'm not really scared so much about AI artists and AI musicians and AI reaction channels as I am scared about this same technology being used to fucking kill us. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't trust any world government, okay? If I'll be goddamn honest. If you think for a second that I trust the United States or China or the Russian Federation, I don't trust any of these groups. They're all self-interested. And I think it's really scary that, honestly, we live in a world where we have technology that eventually can replace human decision-making when it comes to 
killing human beings, okay? It takes one virus, one mess up, one skip to turn that from like some goofy tool that you're using to something that thinks all human beings are bad and just decides to drop the missiles right on us. I can only hope that the governments going forward are going to come up with a million stop gaps for it, okay? But what I've seen in the arms race is bigger is always better. And who gives a shit about safety as long as you've got the most destructive product on hand? So ladies and gentlemen, yeah, uh, world, I don't know, it might end soon. But to be honest with you, uh, if the world does end, all I know is we've had the best time and I'm going to live every day like it's my last, okay? And the day that mushroom cloud shows up, I'm going to crack open a cold one, sit down with the boys and watch the inferno fly right at me. Because uh, I played Fallout, I played Stalker. Those are not worlds that I want to be participating in. But ladies and gentlemen, yeah, this has been a bit of an anxiety driving moment for me. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Maybe I am just too anxious. Maybe I am doom scrolling a lot more than usual. But uh, yeah, reading everything so far and seeing the, the events sort of fall into place is truly a scary, scary thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.